everybody. This is Steve McIntyre talking about arm, sorry, A-Arch 64 planning. Hey, folks. So, <laughs> you may remember me from such previous talks as. <laughs> Again, this is probably going to be a similar kind of mix. I do have a number of slides here. Um, about AOT64. Um, the point of this is I don't want to be just be telling everybody about that. I want, to, uh, um, I want us to get started planning on what we're going to do about bootstrapping it. Um, ARM have called this AOT64. As an ARM employee presenting something with ARM content, I've been told I have to do that. Other names have been suggested that I'm not going to, not going to mention by name. Other people may do. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, agenda. Uh, I'm going to give a quick summary of ARM v8 and bits and pieces of the, road, of the ARM roadmap around it. Then I have a demo. I have a fast model um, from ARM on my laptop so I can show you an emulated um, a 64 system at least. Um, and then we can talk about bootstrapping. Again, as always, there's a gobby page. Please, somebody take notes. So this is one of the slides that is, was given to me by um, the, well, the ARMv8 team to describe what ARMv8 is. I hope you can read that. It's probably a bit small. Basically, showing the family from ARMv5, v6, v7, and v8. Um, essentially, what it shows, the most important thing is it does everything in 32 bit land just like v7. There are obviously 64 bit v8 features. It also adds some extra features which are common to both 32 and 64 bit in v8. I'll, I'll mention some of those. Um, it is the first 64-bit ARM CPU. Um, not really. OpenOffice is being rubbish. Sorry. Um, so it runs both the old and and new instruction sets. So any pre-existing ARCH32, again, which is ARM's na name now for 32-bit ARM instructions, it will run both ARM and thumb instruction sets exactly like v7. Um, it should be reasonably quick. I don't know of, it, of any exact benchmarks people have done, and obviously we don't have real hardware to be able to claim performance for. Um, expect your ARM v7 code to work fine. Um, and then there is the new 64-bit ARM instruction set. Um, it will continue to run VFPv3. Sorry, Ian? Wait for, wait for Mike. So it runs 32-bit just user mode stuff or including kernel side um, privileged modes? It, oh, it should run. That's a good question. I don't know. OK. <laughs> Actually, oh, it does. Yes, there's another guy here who knows more about it than I do. Right, so you can run a 32-bit kernel if you want it. Yeah, of course, you'll need the, the all the support stuff. You know. For the, for the actual hardware, but yes, it will run 32-bit kernel too. Okay. okay. Cool. Thanks. So, what keys do you want? Mike? <laughs> run, run. <laughs> um, VFPv3 is the existing vector floating point unit, which is standardized in ARMv7. Um, th there is going to be a v4 vector floating point unit in ARMv8. Um, it is backwards compatible. It's just bigger and better. So uh, it's possible to build the V8 with only user support for the instruction set or with kernel support. Um, so uh, the idea is that for now, you will always have both. But at some point in the future, they might start producing hardware that hasn't got the kernel support because you really don't need it anymore. OK. Um, the other thing that's in there is the Neon SIMD engine is, is also going to be in V8. I believe and I hope that it's going to be a requirement for it, unlike being optional in the past, which has caused us great fun doing software. Uh, just to um, add, I, I read a mail about half an hour ago that says that 
um, that the kernel maintainers will not actually accept hardware support for V8 in the 32-bit ARM namespace, so it okay. probably won't be able to run a 32-bit kernel yes. on it purely because they won't add the hardware support for 32-bit kernels. So, 32-bit compatibility, it supports every existing V7 feature that anyone is, going, is ever going to care about. I believe it does all of it. I, I'm not aware of anything that's missing. So that includes, again, the SIMD, the Neon Engine. It includes the um, ARM's proprietary security extensions, which are known as Trust Zone. Um, it's a, it will support the virtualization and LPAE that have just gone into the, a, the Cortex A15 as well. Um, so you will be able to do virtualization on V8. Um, that means you'll be able to have a 64-bit kernel with a mix of 32 and 64-bit guests. Um, it's fully supported. Um, the ARCH64 ISA is designed to feel similar to ARCH32. Obviously, it can't be identical for obvious reasons, but it will be, it's in, it, the feel of it is apparently okay. Um, it will be fixed length 32-bit instructions. There, will not, th there is no plan that I'm aware of to do anything like thumb on ARCH64. I mean, obviously, if you want to run thumb, you can continue to do it. So why would you bother? You can always go back to ARCH32 either, if you, or even thumb if, if, if you need to. Um, one thing that is obviously different is rather than the existing 60, uh, 16 registers that you have access to, the, there's five bits of register space now. So that will be 31 uh, general purpose registers. They're all 64-bit. Stack pointer, program counter are not general purpose. Um, there will be, for, in most modes, a dedicated zero register, which uh, a lot of people have been qu crying out for, I'm told. So, more new features, uh, much improved SIMD. So instead of the quite limited set of registers, they get the, you're going to get more of them. Um, whereas previously, if you used Neon, you were very limited in terms of what floating point modes it supported. Um, I think it was single precision instead of double precision. I'm not exactly clear on all the details. The new one's better. <laughs> Um, and mo even more important, possibly, for people who care about these things, there are new um, locking instructions ready for design specifically to match the C++ and C atomics, which are in the latest standards. Um, ARM years ago was not wonderful for providing atomics. Um, these days, it's very, very important that these work well, so they've been designed in from the word go. Um, now, because V8 has happened, doesn't mean V7 stops here. There is still a continuing roadmap. We, I mean, we've seen Cortex A8, Cortex A9, A15, A7 is coming. Um, there are other members in the family still yet to be announced, uh, which I'm not going to do because I'm not going to steal any thunder from marketing because I'm not that brave. Um, ARM V8 is still under development. The architecture was announced externally to ARM um, Q4 last year. Um, working with a load of partners right now, um, people who are all developing hardware to go with this, obviously. Um, the s remaining specs are expected to be released second half of 2012. I don't know exactly when. The plans are soonish. Um, no one's committing to it exactly yet, but everything should be out there soon. And expect to see hardware sometime in 2013. Again, this actually, I, we on, I honestly can't tell you when it is because it will all depend on the specific um, silicon partners as to when people actually get things out on the market. It'll be sometime 2013. Um, for further information, if you really want to know more about this, follow the link arm.com slash architecture. There is more information than most people will ever want to know about the new, the new architecture. Um, go have a look. If you, want, if you, if you can ask me if you'd like, but I'm a software guy, not a CPU designer, so I'm not the right person to, for real detail. So I have a demo. Um, one of the things that ARM tends to do for design for new CPUs is we have what's, what is called a fast model. Now, fast is a relative term. 
It's much faster than any models that we've had in the past. Um, for the sake of not keeping you guys sat here for 20 minutes waiting for it to boot, I booted the, the, this earlier. Here's one I made earlier, should I say. But if we switch over, we should see. I have the boot messages, the, from um, a fast model. You can see it's a standard looking uh, Linux kernel. The model is giving it a gig of RAM. This comes up really, really slowly when it starts, hence why I've already done all this. Um, there's loads of details about it. Uh, this particular kernel, th kernel 3.4, compiled by uh, Jonathan Austin, a, f a guy in the software department in ARM. Um, this is an SMP model, which isn't very fast, 400 BOGO MIPS. Again, it's a model. It'll, the hardware will be much faster. Um, and just to show, I mean, um, we even have this particular model, this file system includes, we have an SSH server drop there. It includes Apache. It includes Postgres. We have people who have already been doing port work um, to make sure that, that a lot of this stuff works on AR64. Um, some patches have, have, have gone out, not as many as we'd like. Um, that's going to be improving soon, I hope. So that is the serial console. If I move that out the way, then behind it, you should see um, this is an Ubuntu-based system. Um, most of the patches were going to, to Ubuntu and Debian at the time, but I can log in without caps lock. Oh, no. <sighs> right. No, that's not right. Let me go and talk to the other one. Yay for demos. Aren't they wonderful? Just for information, <laughs> you will see. In a moment, it takes a short, again, it's not rapid yet. <laughs> You'll see at the moment, look, you know, it's a real port. No, it doesn't have a current D package. And there aren't any. Oh. Apologies, there were some on this, and clearly the app I was running has cleaned up after itself. I was even going to demonstrate deep package installing something. You've all seen that before. Trust me, it works. <laughs> um, sorry? Logs? It's, again, it's totally emulated. Um, it is not designed for absolute performance yet. It's something that the team in ARM are working on all the time. What I can do is do that. This will take a while, so I'm going to come back to this later. Um, Are we uh, going to get our hands on this fast model at any time? Um, it is available at the moment for licensing. Uh, people are working on improving that as we speak. Um, I can't give you full details just yet. Watch this space. So that is starting X on this virtual frame buffer. I'll come back to it in a, in a shortly. So, 
terms of bootstrapping, um, the tool chain already works. People have been doing a lot of cross-building. The tool chain does run natively as well. Believe me, you do not want to be running a native compilation on this model. You know, life's too short. Um, the point of the model is, of course, to be able to validate things at the moment. Um, it does work. Uh, the kernel port has been done in sidearm. Um, those of you who watched the, the kernel mailing list will have noticed um, literally last Friday, um, the initial implementation stuff was posted to the kernel mailing list. Uh, Catalan and Will and a bunch of other people have been doing lots and lots of work to get this as a new port. The plan is, is it will not end up being combined with the existing Arch ARM. It's going to be Arch ARCH64. That's a controversial dis decision. To be honest, like anything in the kernel, if you, when you first turn up with a big set of patches, some people want to merge 32 and 64, like has happened for other architectures. For us, this is such a different uh, CPU that, uh, that the, the, what the ARM folks would like to do is to keep them separate. We'll see how it goes. But basically, the kernel work is, is happening right now. Um, bootstrapping user land, again, cross-build the base system. We're testing using models for now. There was a small team in ARM who've been working on this already. Um, clearly, distro folks are going to be doing it next. Um, one of my jobs in Lenovo is going to be to help support the distros. Um, we're looking at, su at supplying to anyone who's interested a basic uh, root file system using Open Embedded. And the point of that, of that root file system will be that you will be able to chew root in it. You'll be able to do whatever else you need. Use the tools that are there to help bootstrap the beginning of any distro. Um, the, obviously, the tool chain is, is out there already. Um, it's upstream in GCC. Uh, people are working on backporting to GCC 4.7. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, the other thing that's going to happen in Lenaro is we're going to be setting up a bug tracker for the distros to share the ARM V8 work. So when, it, when, when people do come up with patches that need to go upstream, we don't need to have all of the distros all doing the work. You know, it would be nice if we worked together. Uh, the enterprise distros have, uh, uh, are, sorry, enterprise distros have been starting work already. The ARM server market um, is potentially very lucrative, or that's what, what they're all hoping. Um, V8 is going to be a large part of that. So, for AR64 in Debian, the plan is we'll be cross bootstrapping because, of course, that's what you need to do for any brand new architecture. Switch to real hardware as soon as we can. There will be hardware available sometime next year. And, of course, I'm going to be pushing to get hold of something for Debian as much as we can. We'll see how, how well it works. If we can get into Debian ports not too long after that, if, because we can use the models before then for verification, it shouldn't be too difficult to get a basic setup working. And really, really, it would be nice if we can get into Wheezy plus one. Yes, I realize that's not that long away. We're probably going to freeze in two years. It should be doable. Who wants to help? <laughs> yeah. Oh, only two of you? Oh, three, four, woo! Right. If, basically, if you're interested, of course, I'm not taking names or anything stupid like that, join us in Debian Arm. That's where this is going to start happening soon. Um, as I said, there are more details coming that I can't tell you about yet because I don't know all of them. Um, I'm hoping we should get some, well, some extra things going soon. So, again, thanks, Arm, Lenaro, all the community who've, all, who've already been involved in this. So the most useful thing everyone can do right now is make your multi-arch build dependencies work. Yes. Um, Which you can do for easily. Nothing to do with AR64. You don't need to know anything. Just make it work. Oh, and make your packages cross-build well. The, the tool chain will do most of it for you. If, you, if your packages are, are already working in multi-arch and cross-building, most of this will just work, we hope. Uh, from my RC, Constantinos, uh, how far has it gone regarding Debian porting? Sorry? How far has, gone, has it gone regarding Debian porting? The um, 
we already have, as I said, the, in the internal team, they've been doing, an, to be honest, an Ubuntu Natty port. The vast majority of the work there is clearly portable straight to Debian. I mean, it's even to the level that the initial toolchain uh, releases are multi-arch by default, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know how far it's going to work. So, I mean, the, that image you booted it is basically, you know, it's Ubuntu, but that's more or less the same at the base. Uh, it all works. Uh, only 10% of the patching needed for that was actually ARCH64 specific. Very little change needed to be made because mostly it doesn't matter. 90% uh, of those patches yeah, yeah, yeah. were cross-building patches. Sorry? Uh, yeah. And so the set number of packages built for ARCH64 is about 130, I think. It's basically enough to do bootstrap with Apache and LAMP and MySQL. I, I thought it was more than that. What? Think so? Yeah, I, could, I, I can't uh, tell you the exact be, number. It might be 170 or something, yeah. but it wasn't. It's yeah, basically we have uh, the, the base system plus a few bits. Um, one of the things that people wanted to demonstrate was a LAMP stack. Obviously, people who are going to want a 60-foot 4-bit ARM system in a server will probably want a LAMP stack. Who'd have thought? And can we consider Neon as the default F FP? Uh, Neon, as far as I know, will be required for on V8. Yes. I, I already answered Marcos on IRC, but uh, yeah, I guess it's good for the room too. Um, the plan, because it is default for V8, will actually be to have Neon on by default in the Debian and Ubuntu tool chains, so yeah. no need for people to flip the switch themselves. So... So, yeah, so although all that porting work's been done, the only problem is that Arm Legal won't let the people who've done the work send any of the patches in. So we mostly have to do it all again, which is a bit tedious. Um, but, um, well, it sucks. Somewhere, oh, God, give us a menu, please. This works better on a bigger screen, of course. Um, what, we, what we have running here is a 32-bit um, ARMHF um, installation. It's an XFCE uh, build. Um, this is an example of specifically to show um, existing V7 32-bit builds do not need any, twe any tweaks at all. The file system that we have here was built as 64, and literally we just untiled a 32-bit chiroot into it, and it just works. Um, XFCE, what, what's the shortcut keys to bring up a menu or anything? Anyone? <laughs> Alt F2. And then type. Yeah, I know, demos, wonderful. Sorry, Adam? Yeah. Ah, it is there. Terminal. <laughs> Come back to it. What I can demonstrate oh, is it is running a lamp stack. While it's waiting, doing emulated things in X, which is never going to be fast. I hope you can all see that. We have ARCH64, and it tells you all of that information in PHP info. 
Um, it has PHP, my, uh, my admin installed, and a whole bunch of other stuff. They take bloody ages, especially when you're trying to get it to do stuff in X. But this hopefully is a, you know, something helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's just come up, and then the terminal hopefully <laughs> now, talk amongst yourselves for 20 minutes, and we'll get a Firefox shortly. <laughs> so while that's, while that's loading, um, due to the, all the coolness of multi-arch, we can run 32-bit things and 64-bit things together. Hell yes, absolutely. And what that means is uh, OpenJDK 32-bit should work out of yes. the box. Yep. And if someone was interested in uh, making an optimized ARch 64 version of OpenJDK, um, that might be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is exactly the, one, one of the reasons what I think my arm was, was very interested in Debian and Ubuntu is multi-arch makes using the 32 and 64-bit mix so much easier. Hello? That one, I don't want to start type Firefox again. <laughs> This is why I started the model earlier. It, takes, it does take 10 minutes or so to boot, and starting up a Firefox takes about the same length of time again. I, I would love to show you Firefox looking at a web page locally. We'll get there, hopefully. Um, of course, we haven't got so, got so far up the stack in, in bootstrapping AR64 to get to Firefox. That's way, way out of scope at this point. And of course, equally, Firefox shouldn't need 64-bit. Well, it, it depends. It might run a bit longer with its memory leaks if, if it's 64-bit instead of 32. Who knows? But the things that people care about so far for 64-bit are server tasks, not desktop tasks. Anything else? Oh, come on, please. You've got to carry on talking and so, so, we, so we see Firefox start. <laughs> well, again, this is still one model running all of it. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I want to you know, make pains to point that out. Um, this is emulating of V8 doing everything. So, so you mentioned the date of 2013, I think, for actual hardware. Yes. And you want to ship this as ideally part of Wheezy Plus One, which is going to free sort of first half of 2014. Yep. Realistically, how quickly are we as developers going to be able to get our hands on something we can play with? I wish I knew. Um, you might like to point out to ARM that if they want yeah. us to ship, then we sure. need to be able to play. Oh, absolutely. It's ARM, the, there are FPGAs that people have already announced, which, which are much closer for modeling than the software will ever be, but if anything, are slower. Um, as soon as we get hardware available, there, is, there are so many people bottlenecked and queuing up to want to get hold of some. Um, and of course, again, it's not down to ARM to produce them. This is, it's the wonderful thing of working for a, chip, for a CPU designer rather than a CPU producer is we're going to need um, you know, all of the usual ARM silicon partner suspects are, are probably going to end up doing V8, and we're going to have to wait for the first versions of those to come out. Um, we will be pushing hard to get stuff out into the community as soon as possible because, hey, it matters. Oh, Firefox, getting there. Next, um, TBM. Yeah, I wanted to ask a, a few things. Yeah. Uh, so the, the first thing, so you're showing that um, the fast model. What about support for QEMU? Good question. Um, ARM and QEMU have an interesting relationship. Um, ARM tip are, are not very happy about releasing enough information directly, or, or especially not working on QEMU. Um, the information that is necessary to, to do QMU will be out soon, I, I am told, and there are a whole bunch of people who are queuing up to work on it. The Lenovo toolchain folks also want QMU as well because it helps them. Um, so I would expect as soon as the specs come out, it won't take long. That's the best I can say at this point. Okay. Um, and, you, and you also mentioned that most people don't need the 64-bit. 
Um, so what would they be installing? Would they be installing 32-bit ARM and then just install additional packages? I'm just wondering, do we need something in, in, the, insta in the Debian installer support? Um, well, most people aren't going to need 64-bit desktop stuff. Um, I mean, it'll work. Oh, yay, here we go. This is the same PHP info page, but running locally inside the model. And look, it does work. I could even... Maybe if it talks to me, it'll take a short while. Um, we're expecting that people are going to want that for servers. For desktops, um, it's going to take a while. Sorry, Neil had a question. It's a question uh, from Bernard Link on IRC. What's the user space memory layout? Is there any chance of the uh, stuffing out the first four gig of virtual memory to make sure all 32-bit assumptions are cached? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, a, th that's a question I honestly can't, can't help with. I don't know. Um, and yeah, here's default other, other stuff. You know, it, it's a default Apache install on here with some things installed. That's probably going to take a while, especially when I typo it. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot more te um, technical information coming out in the next few months. Um, we'll see. I mean, as it is, definitely what the plan will be for Debian work is we, I expect as soon as we get hardware, we're going to be running a base of ARM HF, um, you know, a base system, and obviously 64-bit kernel, 32-bit user land, and then we can have chiroots for, for actually building. Um, as D the DSA folks keep on pointing out, we did this the wrong way with ARMHF, and we had an ARMHF based system with the Chiroots, and that then meant that we ended up having to, we, well, running unstable on a DSA box is not a fun experience, uh, and they don't like it. Go on. You can actually see up the top here, although you there is a number which is a count of total instructions run so far, and that is well into 1.4 billion at this point. It's, um, the suggestion is from the, the folks who know that on a reasonable size AMD64 machine, you should expect to see equivalent performance in the model on the order of 10 to 20 megahertz. It depends hugely on exactly what hardware you're running and what tasks you're doing. Um, so it's not something you want to be doing a native compile on. No way, no how. Aha, look, we have PHP my admin. So look, we have PHP, we have MySQL, we have there. Uh, yes, there was a MySQL on here, there's a Postgres on here. It all works for a LAMP stack. Um, do we have any other questions? And silence descent. So... Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and the demo worked almost as well as I hoped. <laughs> hey, demos, we all know how that goes. Um, thank you all for coming. As I said, there is scope for a lot of people to get involved doing cool stuff on an architecture bring up. Um, Konstantinos will agree, I'm sure, Bedell and other folks who've done Arch bring, bring ups will say, yeah, it's a lovely, cool thing to do. It can be very frustrating, but very reward rewarding when it all works. So please join in, find us on Debian Arm. Thank you.